This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. I'm Tanner. Today we're gonna be taking you through part two of the Arduino. I should say mainly Tanner is because I'm learning along with you. Josh, we talked about it. There's there's a huge amount of stuff to learn with Arduino. It's a, it's a big learning curve, but we're gonna try and jump into the code today. What I'm gonna try and show is I'm gonna show the basics of using the software and then hopefully hook up a servo and, and have a little bit of example code in here to show how to make the servo sweet. Now, this is the first time I'm also gonna be experiencing code. Tanner just gave me a little glimpse of what we're gonna be talking about today. And uh, what I can encourage you guys to is uh, don't be discouraged by this. Most of the work has already been done by other people and you can simply take that code and change it to your needs. Yeah, so I, I look at it as there's there's Lego blocks, right? And and there's there's lots, there's thousands of people that have been playing with Arduino and have written little Lego blocks of code that you can use. And it can be intimidating when you see it at first, but um, it's not as hard as it seems. It's very logical. So what's our first step, brother? Well, so I've, I've launched the Arduino software. This is called the Arduino IDE. This is the program that you're gonna to use to write your code, to look at example code, to make okay. changes to existing code, and then also to flash that code or program it onto your, your Arduino board. Okay. So when it first launches, you get this, uh, this basically a blank slate. Um, there's a few important things in here that every program needs, uh, and that is a, a setup function and also a loop function. They have, a, they have to be in the program for the program to run. And so that's why they're already there for you in your blank slate. Basically what setup does is it runs one time as soon as the Arduino is powered on or when the Arduino boots up. So any code that you put there may be defining how the rest of the program is gonna work. It may be setting up pins for input or output modes, um, but it's basically anything that, that you need to initiate or, or to do to initial, initialize your program. Kind of like setting a table before dinner. It's setting the table, yeah. Okay. Then your loop function is where the rest of the primary code goes. So the way the loop function works is, and you'll, you'll see it's got these little curly brackets. Those are, those are showing you that this function starts here at the first curly bracket, and it ends here at the second, at the very last curly bracket. Anything that's in the loop, it's gonna be executed sequentially. So the first line, then the second line, then the third line, and so on. And when it gets to the end of the loop, it's gonna go back to the beginning of the loop. And it does that forever. That's what the loop's for. So as long as the Arduino's on and it's running, it's gonna be moving through that loop function. So what I'm gonna do is uh, show you here one of the great things about the Arduino IDE and the Arduino community. If you go up to file, there's this examples um, section. And there are already hundreds of examples built into the IDE. But what else is cool is if you buy, let's say a sensor from a company like SparkFun or Adafruit or wherever, um, a lot of times they'll also have a library for that sensor, which includes the code to talk to the sensor. And it usually includes examples that show you how to use the sensor in a couple of different applications. So this can keep expanding as you, as you, as you expand in your, your knowledge and your, um, you know, start to use other technologies and other sensors with your Arduino board Fantastic. and other products. And I'm actually gonna use it today. Um, one of the examples uh, that's in here is if you go here to Servo, there's a Servo library. And a library is just a, a bunch of code that was written by somebody else okay. that does a complicated job so that you don't have to write it. Love it. And, and so we go to the Servo library and, uh, and I'm gonna go here to the sweep example. We're gonna, we're gonna talk through what this does, uh, but it's actually really simple. So the first thing is it pulls in the Servo library. Um, like I said, that's just a b bunch of code that was written by somebody else to talk to servos. We're creating a servo object and we're giving it a position value of zero. There, we're creating a variable to store that position value zero. And then in our setup function, we talked about that. Setup function yeah. runs one time at the beginning. We're initializing that servo and we're saying, we want, it, we want the signal pin to be on pin nine. Now that's gonna refer to the digital pin nine um, if it's one of the analog ones, you'll see the letter A in front of it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook that up exactly as, as these comments say. And one thing I'll, I'll show you here, Josh, there's two slashes here and then there's some text. Yeah. That is, means we're starting a comment. Anything that happens after the two slashes is, is ignored by the computer as far as being interpreted as code. So this is information for the developer. It's information for the developer. And I'll put notes to myself in there because when I look at a piece of code I wrote six months later, I can't remember what it does. <laughs> Okay. So, so these are notes for future you. Okay. And, and also, exactly. and also in, in these examples, a lot of time there's co comments on every line to say why that line's there and okay. what it does. So when you look at this example, 
um, you'll see here, this is saying it attaches the servo pin to, to pin nine. So, so that's, that's telling you this line is doing that. If you wanted to change that pin, you could just change that nine to a different value and move the servo to a different pin. I love it. Um, so it kind of teaches you how to read code and how to do code just by seeing the examples and then having the, the notes explain what the, the code does. Exactly, yep. So we've got our servo, everybody's seen one of these before. <laughs> um, uh, so you've got your positive connection in the center. The ground is the brown wire. And then signal is the orange or yellow wire. And um, I'm gonna connect those then to the Arduino as well. So uh, taking the ground wire, connecting it to the ground. And then we talked about it already, our signal is supposed to go to pin nine. Um, so I'm putting that right there. And now we've got our servo connected to the Arduino. Fantastic. Okay. We'll go ahead and hook it up to the USB. So that's all set up. Now we talked about what our setup function does in this case. Let's look at the loop function. So remember I said the loop runs multiple times. When yeah. it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. Inside this, there's actually two additional loops. So um, this is called a for loop, and we can talk about how they're structured a little bit, but basically what this is saying is we have this variable position, and we're gonna set it to zero to begin with. So for position equals zero. Then it says as long as position is less than or equal to 180, add one to the position. So this plus equals thing, you'll see this in programming a lot. It just means take position, add one to it. Then we're gonna take that position value and we're gonna write it to this servo function. And what that does is that, that tells the servo function already knows how to interpret degrees and convert them into PWM pulses or pulse widths. That's how the servo interprets these position values. So it's taking from zero to 180 degrees and it's plugging it into that write function for the servo. And between each degree, we're gonna wait 15 milliseconds. So we just have a delay here that just says, when you get this line, count 15 milliseconds out, wait, and then proceed. And that'll be the uh, speed. So basically what it's saying is, yeah, between degrees. So from degree one to degree two, we're gonna wait 15 milliseconds. Then from two to three, we'll wait 15 milliseconds. So it's gonna run through that. Then it gets to the end of that for function, or that for loop, and we immediately start another one. This one now, we start with the position being set to 180. So it's 180 degrees, and our, we flipped our greater than less than sign around here. We've, now we're saying as long as position is greater than zero, then we're gonna take position and we're gonna subtract one from it. So now we're going the other way. We started by counting and incrementing up to 180 okay. degrees. Now the second loop's gonna decrement down to zero. So the same exact thing inside the function. We're just plugging that position into the servo. We're waiting 15 milliseconds. We get to the end of that loop and we go all the way back to the beginning of the main. So Fantastic. that's the whole program. Um, based on that, what we should expect to see, hopefully, if it's written right, is the, the motor should sweep back and forth about 180 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up here to upload. Okay. And I'm gonna hit that. It'll do some compiling, and then we should see, as soon as the lights finish flashing, there's our servo motor, and it's sweeping back and forth between <laughs> 180 you degrees. Just, you just made a really awesome servo tester. That's right, yeah, and it looks to be working. It is, really well. <laughs> so. Let's talk about some things we could do to change this. So um, what would we do, Josh, if we wanted to make the motor move a little faster? So you're gonna wait less time between each adjustment. So you d decrease the milliseconds. Yeah, so we've got 15 millisecond delay here. If we change this over to let's say five milliseconds now, and I change it in both places, right? Upload that. Now we should see the motor sweep a lot quicker. When we get there. Very good, yeah. Now, if I changed only one of those, remember we got two loops here. Yes. So the first loop is going in one direction, positive, and the other loop's going in the negative direction. So I'll change it now, I'll put that other one back to 15, but I'll keep this one at five. Now we should see quick movement in one direction and slow movement back. That's exactly what you get. Yep. So, I mean, this stuff's extremely logical, and it's, yeah. and it's it, if you write it there, this is doing exactly what you've, well, what you've asked it to. And what I love is when you're talking about those Lego blocks and stuff, it, you take a very complicated function that would be hard to kind of picture how you'd have to write it, but there's key things that we can change real time and just observe. Yeah, absolutely. So another example would be, let's say we don't want to go to 180 degrees. Let's say we just want 90. I changed the comparator here, so I'm saying as long as the position's less than 90, and then I changed the starting position here to 90. So that's two, a little bit more complicated change. But I, I, I upload that code now, and we should see a much shorter sweep. 
And my guess is if we want to see it the other side, we just invert those two things and we can get it to sweep on the latter half. Is that correct? Similar change, but instead of going from zero to 90, you're going to go from zero. 90 to 180. There we go. So, so we do that and then your starting position here would be 180 back to a 90 position. So now you're saying sweep between 90 and 180 degrees. Perfect. So again, we'll upload that. And you'll see the arm should switch over to the far side and sweep 90 <laughs> degrees on the far side. It. So, and, and that's kind of basic programming. Now yeah. you can take these examples and these starting blocks and let's say you wanted to hook a potentiometer up to this and have a knob that you turn. And there's an, there's an example code on here or somewhere on the internet that shows you how to read a potentiometer. Okay. You could read that value in and you could plug that number into the position of the servo. And now as you turn the knob, the position of the servo would be set by the position of the knob. So you can take these Lego blocks from all these various sources from examples here, from examples on the internet and, and combine them to kind of build your your system. So again, with Arduinos here, there's multiple functions. It could be a mechanical function like we see with the servos. It could be functions with lights, LED lights. It could be potentiometers going in and talking to adjust either a servo or a light. Uh, all this stuff is compatible through this one common board, but also the code speaks to each other. Yeah, so as an example of that, I'm, I'm just pulling an LED out of here. So um, let's hook up real quick uh, an LED and we'll, we'll, we'll pull a real quick fade example um, okay. to get this LED to fade on and off. The LED is attached to is set to pin 9 in this example. Um, we've got brightnesses and fade amounts. Down here in the loop we say analog right LED brightness value. So it knows that that's the pin we're going to and this brightness value I assume is something later in the code we're going to start changing. Uh, what you've got happening here on the circuit is we've got the output which we've set as pin 9. It's one of the PWM outputs. Mm -hmm. um, it goes into the positive side of the LED then on the ground side of the LED, I've got a 330 ohm resistor. The reason for that is the outputs on the Arduino are 5 volts. Most LEDs are 3. 330 ohms gets us close to where we want to be on voltage. So we've got that there to drop the voltage down. And, uh, and then a wire connecting to the Arduino's ground. Super simple circuit. Um, and, uh, and basically, what's, the majority of what's happening is happening with the software. So uh, we, could, we could go in here and make a change like... Um, let's say we want this again to fade even faster. We can shorten the time. And we should see that speed pick up here. Yep. If you want to slow it down, you could make this really, really slow by, um, you know, I've now increased it to 150 milliseconds between fade values. You can actually see the flicker now. Yeah, yep, you can a little bit. And anything over 100 milliseconds you're starting to be able to pick up on, right? With yeah, and, and it, it depends a lot on also this fade amount value. So we have we have it changing by a value of five every time it increments. We could change that number and see a similar effect. Wow. And this again is working off of pulse width modulation, the same kind of uh, way that a servo is communicated to where it's how long it takes the power on and off, correct? Yeah, so it's the percentage of time that the power is on versus off. It always sends out a square wave on off signal, mm -hmm. but it's just varying how wide the width of those waves. Very cool. Imagine taking a light switch and flipping it a certain yep. amount, you'd almost get a fade. Exactly. Uh, up yep. and down. Yep. So in, in depending on how much time, you know, you and I can't do it quick enough no. to make it look like a fade, but the, the computer can. And so if you vary the amount of time that you spend on versus off, you know, 60% off versus 40% yeah. on is 40% brightness. There it is. So Perfect. I love it. Yeah, uh, that just goes to show you, I mean, we, we very quickly in, in a, you know, five or 10 minutes went from starting with this to putting together a, a, a bit of code and, and a circuit yeah. that sweeps the servo back and forth from 180 degrees to zero or from 90 degrees to zero. Um, we then adapted that again in just a few minutes where we took yeah. an LED, we turned it on and off with a fade. From mechanical to light, I love it. Now, typical when I start playing with things, I get myself in a corner, I'm like, oh my gosh, I just want to set everything back to zero. How would you take this Arduino back to nothing on it again? One way to do that is, you know, we pull these wires out, disconnect it from the circuit. We go here to file, new, we get a new blank sketch. That's what they call programs in okay. Arduino. Hit upload, and we're back to basically a blank slate. Um, the Arduino actually ships with a program on it. It ships with a, a little program called Blink, and Blink's available in the examples. Um, what it does is that LED we talked about in the previous episode that's tied to pin 13, mm -hmm. um, it just turns pin 13 on and off uh, with a delay. So you can go here to basics, 
link, hit upload on that, and we'll see it's a one second delay, 1000 milliseconds is in the code here. And you'll see that the, the pin 13 LED is blinking. So that's how, the, that's how the Arduino will ship to you with that program on it. Fantastic. So as we said before, this is just the very beginning, but hopefully this kind of gave you a little bit of inspiration. What we really want you to do is just start playing, just start discovering here, take functions and start playing with code. Remembering you can always go back and kind of reset it and start over again. Code is not nearly as complicated as many people think it is. I know we're gonna be learning a lot, and uh, Tanner, I can't thank you enough. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure, Josh. I, I, this is the kind of thing that I really love, so. Fantastic. Also want to thank our tech channel sponsors, JLCPCB, JLCPCB, here to take your PCB designs and make them a reality. So check more information about them in the link below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe bell because we're gonna continue on our road through the Arduino board. Tanner, thanks again. Yeah, my pleasure. See you next time.